Well, Pride Month is now over, but we're hearing from some members of the LGBTQ plus community who actually had a less than stellar time this year at Pride, specifically ones who were profiled in the New York Post that said they really felt disappointed and even left out this year because of the way that they were treated by other members of the LGBTQ plus community and their allies after they chose to do something. Specifically, they chose to come out. And they came out as Trump supporters. And predictably, it did not go well. So the New York Post reports, Brave pals Anthony Tolve and John McGuigan hit the chaotic New York City's Pride Parade June 30th with rainbow Trump flags, earning them deathly cold stares and jeers from revelers, one who flipped them the bird, they said. There was definitely a lot of hate, said Tolve, 45. A lot of rich white women with children who feel inclined to come up to you and face off with you. I was at the beach the other day, and I was booed off the beach. A guy started kicking sand on me. This was at Reese Park, Tolve asked. Okay, so there's a couple of problems. First of all, fellow members of the LGBTQ plus community don't want to be associated with you because you are actively rooting for a candidate that's part of a party that fucking hates you. You're like a chicken who's pro KFC or a sheep that's pro wolf. Your political position is utterly nonsensical. It's against your own self-interest to support this candidate. So not only are you offending them, but you look like a fool. Now, on top of that, you're showing up to pride with a Trump flag. Did you expect anything but ridicule? And it's ironic that they complained that people were flipping them off. You showing up with a Trump flag, that's basically a fuck you to everyone at Pride. You're saying, I don't support your rights. Even though you're part of the community, you're saying I support this candidate who's against you. I mean, if the candidate that you support gets elected, Project 2025 necessitates that gay guys like you lose equal marriage rights. On top of that, other members of the community will be affected as well. Gender affirming healthcare would be taken away from minors. Your very existence would be deemed pornographic. And as a result, public displays of pride, like the one you just attended, would be restricted because Project 2025 explicitly says that First Amendment rights do not apply to queer people. So that's why you're feeling left out because the people here they are being marginalized by the person you're supporting. And being a gay Trump supporter is just fucking dumb in and of itself. But the two gay men that we're talking about here, Anthony Tolve and John McGuigan, they might literally be the worst Trump supporters, like the most insufferable Trump supporters on the planet. And I say this because upon reading this article, I realized that these two men went the most viral after Trump was convicted because of how unhinged their response was. So we actually reacted to them on the leftist mafia. And as you're going to see, we couldn't believe the bat shittery that we were witnessing. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Those were the two guys the article was talking about. Yeah. So suffice to say, even if they weren't Trump supporters, I'd assume that they'd still have a pretty difficult time making friends. But the good news is that they have each other. They're apparently besties. That's great. But apparently it's not good enough for them and they feel isolated from their own community. Now, I understand that. That would make me feel bad as well. But the reason why you feel that way is because you're supporting a candidate again and a political operation that is an existential threat to everyone in the community. So, of course, you're not 
going to feel the most welcome if you're supporting self-sabotage here. Now, I've told you why reasonable people in the LGBTQ plus community don't want to be associated with individuals like them who are aligned with the far right. But according to a different gay conservative, you're actually a dingbat if you're a queer, but don't want to live in a far right hellhole that would come to fruition in the event Trump were elected and Project 2025 were enacted. I'll let them explain why. You intersectional dingbats who are out there promoting for Hamas, who will kill you, it will be the far right that will save you. You will ultimately want to live in far right countries because largely they will basically be like, all right, you're gay, big goddamn deal, let's move on. This man was told by right wingers that he should be executed when he announced that he was having babies with his husband. But now he's pretending like none of that harassment happened. And he's contending that the far right is actually going to save LGBTQ plus people. And you're crazy for not wanting to live in a far right country. Okay, cool. Listen, he's trying to make it seem like the far right has a live and let live philosophy. But the opposite is true. They literally want to ban his marriage and take away his children, and some even want to execute him. Charlie Kirk, one of his colleagues who he's worked with in the past at Turning Point USA, he just said a couple of weeks ago that the punishment in the Bible is stoning queer people. Yeah, because the Christian nationalist ideology, which they want to impose on all of us, isn't about tolerance. It is explicitly about intolerance. The goal is to impose God's laws on all of us, regardless if we agree or disagree with that religion. So if you honestly think that it's gonna bode better for you to live in a far-right hellhole in the event Trump is elected and Project 2025 is enacted, let's just say you're a little bit misguided, okay? To put it charitably. Now, he referred to Hamas and claimed that queer people's support for Hamas is as nonsensical as we say queer people's support for Republicans is. But queer people are not supporting Hamas. This is a straw man. They're supporting Palestinians and their right to not be murdered by Israel. But one way that queer Republicans kind of rationalize their support for Republicans is to prop up Muslims as the real boogeyman. For example, listen to a conversation that the right-wing drag queen Lady Maga had with the queer person. Would you say you're pro-Palestine or pro-Israel? Pro-Palestine. As a gay man, I would be punished and or put in prison or killed if I were openly gay in Palestine. How do you react to that? I didn't know that. So It is illegal to be gay in Palestine. You are punished by is prison or death. Is Israel? No, Israel has gay pride. Okay. Israel is completely open to lesbian and gay people. So Palestine are... puts them in prison or kills them. You, were, you weren't aware of that? I was not aware of that, no. So that does pose an interesting aspect. Have you seen uh, the Queers for Palestine movement? It's a very it's a very common movement, but I don't see any Muslims for queer movements. I mean, have you tried looking? Because it's interesting that you'd bring up Queers for Palestine because that slogan, I believe, was popularized by a queer organization in Tunisia, which is a Muslim majority country. Furthermore, there are robust LGBTQ plus movements all across the Middle East and North Africa. People who happen to be both queer and Muslim, they actually exist. Those two labels are not mutually exclusive, contrary to popular belief. In fact, I think somebody actually wrote a book about this very subject. Link to Catalyze down below. But Muslims, like Christians, they're not a monolith. All religious people use their religions to justify bigotry if they're bigoted, and if they're not bigoted, then they sometimes use their religion to affirm queer people. I think it just depends on the person, ultimately. Now, when it comes to Palestine, the laws regarding homosexuality are actually unclear because they don't have a state. Now, anecdotally speaking, queer Palestinians don't just exist, but a lot of them actually come out to their friends and family, and they're able to be openly gay. Now, part of the reason why that's the case is because I think that they're not as concerned with policing the lives of people you know, who are sex and gender minorities when they're literally just trying to exist. Now, that's not to say that homophobia doesn't exist there. Of course it does, like it does in every single country. But it's just not a valid reason, I think, to do a genocide against them, right? Saying, well, they're homophobic, therefore their extermination is valid. I mean, no. So it's, it's weird that they always bring up this point as if it's some sort of a gotcha. No, it's not a gotcha. You're just trying to rationalize genocide and prop up Muslims as a boogeyman but you're not 
doing a very good job at that. And part of that is ignorance, part of it is code. But it's incredibly fucking ironic for Lady Maga to make Muslims the boogeyman when we're on the cusp of Christian nationalism here in the United States. Even though gay Maga Cheds won't admit it, deep down, they know that the situation is pretty bad. They're feeling the heat. Even individuals like Lady Maga, who puts on a brave smiley face, but in reality, Lady Maga knows that it's getting bad. And there's a reason why Lady Maga did a pivot back in March of last year, writing on Twitter, quote, I now prefer to call myself a costume artist, not a drag queen. The drag world was a way I could use my talents, but they destroyed their credibility with predatory filth. I'm a performer. I can play any cosplay character. My artistry is about creativity and fun. In other words, the Republican Party started to target drag queens and smear them as groomers, and you were forced to distance yourself from that label if you wanted to remain viable in that right-wing echo chamber that you're in. Now, I'm assuming that you came to that realization after how poorly you were treated at that year's CPAC. Rolling Stone reports, Matt Walsh, perhaps the loudest anti-trans voice in the conservative movement, tweeted a photo of the drag queen talking about Lady Maga, writing, absolute embarrassment. You are not conservative if you are fighting to conserve perversion. A groiper, follower of the white nationalist America First leader Nick Fuentes, later accosted Lady Maga at a dinner as an F-slur. But yet, according to Lady Maga, Muslims are the problem, not Christian nationalists. Just ridiculous. Now, at that same CPAC, Michael Knowles called for the eradication of transgenderism and a year later said that marriage was between a man and a woman. But years prior, tweeted out a photo of himself with Lady Maga saying that this drag queen here he was photographing himself with was a star. So, you know, I get that LGBTQ plus conservatives feel a little bit of whiplash because it seemed like Trump was at least ostensibly less hostile to queer people, but that's just not the case. And a lot of these same gay conservatives tried to ingratiate themselves with right wingers by throwing trans people under the bus, because if you sacrifice them, perhaps the thinking, I guess, is that you know, they're going to spare you, but it just doesn't work that way. If they come for some of us, they're coming for all of us. But I actually think that, and this is, I'm just going to be frank. I actually think that these people are too stupid to understand that. And I say this because the New York Post spoke with another gay Trump supporter who also feels left out by the community. And what he says is confirmation that these people are just fucking dumb. Quote, I'm almost anti-gay, a frustrated doorman, 64 told the Post. It's an embarrassment to see this kind of behavior. I'd really invite them to go to Iran or Gaza. Oh, haven't heard that one before. Got us. See what that does for you. See how fast they throw you in prison or kill you, like what conservatives want to do, right? It feels like the Soviet Union... <laughs> Marxist environment now. He has no fucking idea what that means, he said. Uh, with the gay community, they feel that Republicans on the far right have an anti-gay thing. Yes, they have a certain religious belief. They have a right to say they don't like that lifestyle. Yeah, smartest gay conservative right there, folks. Listen, nobody is denying that they have a right to hate gay people. Of course, they are allowed to hate gay people. It's a free country. The problem is that they want to impose their hateful beliefs on all of us. But to say that LGBTQ plus people are Marxists because they're anti-conservative is just fucking stupid. Like the queer community is not a monolith, right? There are leftist queers. There's, uh, you know, liberal queers. There's conservative queers that don't necessarily support the Republican Party for obvious reasons. But the reason why so many queer people are anti-conservative is because it is logical to be against a party and an ideology that doesn't want you to exist. Like, how do you not understand this? But, you know, this person here goes on to explain that support for Trump literally almost destroyed his marriage. And he says that his husband was horrified when Trump won and he didn't understand why he was so hysterical. And his husband wanted to kick him out of the house. Uh, but he says, thankfully, their marriage survived, but they just can't talk about politics. So, you know, tons of things are pretty peachy in that household. But listen, it is true that LGBTQ plus conservatives, they exist. But here's the thing. If you're going to enthusiastically support a party that fucking hates you and the rest of your community, I don't know why you expect anything but side eyes when you show up to these events, especially if you're going to be flaunting your political ideology, right? Because most queer people are rightfully against a political movement hell-bent on their destruction. So if you can't understand that, then I'm helping you understand that, but that's why you're feeling left out. It's because if you're a conservative that supports Donald Trump— we don't want you as part of our community. Fuck off.
Not only can you take a load, you can take the ultimate load, and even better than that, that you find your true calling and destiny in your willingness to take the ultimate load. load, load. Have it your way, buddy, buddy.